Hello guys, so I'm making this video to show you how to enable onion skinning in Blender. Um, so if you're watching this video, you probably know what onion skinning is already. If not, well, uh, onion skinning allows you to see uh, the previous and the next frame while animating. So I've prepared a little animation here, just a simple uh, cube moving in one direction. So for example, if you want to add a frame uh, here and you'd like to see how the previous frame or the next frame looks like, with Onion Skin you can know exactly uh, how the previous frame or the next frame looks and it uh, and it improves uh, your ability to animate tremendously. However, to my knowledge, there isn't any option in Blender that would turn the onion skinning on, at least for meshes. I know there is an option to turn the onion skinning on for a grease pencil, but for meshes, unfortunately, such option is non-existent. By default. However, of course there are uh, many Blender add-ons that allow you to uh, basically add this feature to Blender, but the downside is most of them cost actual money and I'm a cheapskate. So you can see that you know there is Salash, it's, I think this one is quite popular I haven't used it though. Um, and yeah, there are probably uh, some other ones. Uh, so I've researched this topic a bit and I found two add-ons that uh, may work for you. So the first add-on I found is PSL Snapshot. It's a free add-on uh, made by uh, those people. And uh, it was an add-on created way back uh, when, so it wasn't uh, compatible with Blender 2.8 for a while, but this guy supposedly made it work with Blender 2.8. Unfortunately, this add-on doesn't work for me at all. I can't seem to figure out how to actually enable it, so you may give it a try uh, if you wish. Maybe it, it will work for you, but it doesn't work in my version of Blender, which is uh, 2.82 if I'm not mistaken. Thankfully, there is also another uh, add-on that adds onion skinning to Blender. It was made by this guy also a long time ago. However, I'll include those links in the description. However, if you scroll down a bit, uh, right about here, somewhere, this guy converted it uh, to run in Blender 2.81. So just click on this link and download the file and put it wherever you want, preferably in a folder with all your other add-ons. And next, uh, launch Blender, and just like with any other add-on, uh, go to your preferences, add-ons, install, find the directory where the file ghostframes.py is located, and just click install add-on. Now you see the add-on is successfully installed. You can enable this add-on now. So now there is a one more important step. This add-on works in a way where it saves selected frames from this range that you can specify in a lower resolution and it displays them on inside your camera view. So you have to specify a path where those frames are going to be saved. So for some reason uh, this button that normally uh, asks you for a path doesn't work properly. So if you choose a path by clicking that button, uh, the add-on won't work. You have to create a folder where you want the 
ghost frames uh, saved and just click here and uh, click copy and by clicking Control V paste them here and this should work properly now you can now press save preferences so I'm gonna quickly show you how this add-on works there are two major downsides to using this add-on the first one is that it doesn't simply work inside your viewport you have to choose your camera view via this button and then and only then you can see your ghost frames so preferably you should set your camera to some usable location and rotation I would just I will just uh, zero everything out and I will just move it here and rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis and on the y-axis Uh, so I have a nice here profile view maybe I'll also move it a bit back here so I have the whole animation in range ah. maybe even a bit farther and uh, a bit to the right And I'm gonna um, change the size here so I have a wider lens so now I have the whole animation in the uh, in the range and I'm gonna just select my cube here I'm gonna press N and open the add-on settings you can choose to only display the selected frame that the playhead is on so with this option selected you just press you just press ghost frames it renders in the background the current frame that the playhead is sitting on so you can see that it actually rendered this uh, frame in somewhat a lower resolution now if you move the playhead a bit and uh, the previous frame is visible you can also choose the second option by unchecking this box and choose a range of frames that you want to display so I will choose the whole animation so from frame 1 to frame 40 you can also uh, you can also edit the opacity if you want the ghost frames to be more subtle or more visible and orientation so you can see the ghost frames in the front uh, of the object in the front of the mesh or uh, in the back behind uh, the mesh that you're animating so now I have all the frames selected and now I'm gonna press ghost frames and wait for a while the more frames you have selected or the more complicated your animation is the longer it will take for ghost frames to render those frames fortunately it should render all the frames in the workbench I don't think you can specify the render engine for ghost frames I don't see any option here that would allow you to render ghost frames in uh, cycles or EV I am actually not sure if it renders in the selected engine here, but I don't, I think they are, no, no, I think they are rendered in workbench. Yeah, you can experiment with them if you want. But now you can see all the frames are visible. You have a good idea how all the frames look like and where they are located. So next time you are changing something, you're adding a frame in the middle, you have all the previous and next frames visible you don't have to select the whole uh, animation you can just select for example between frame 32 and frame uh, 
36. The other downside that I was talking about is that you can't simply disable ghost frames in your camera view. There is no uh, enable, disable checkbox anywhere here that I'm aware of. You can only remove all of them or you can remove the current one that you're sitting on. You can't disable their visibility. So if you want to make them visible again, the add-on has to render all the frames again. Like this. So it takes a while. I mean, if you have a simple animation like this, it won't make a lot of difference, but when you're making something more complicated, you'll have to wait a bit if you want to see your onion skin. So as you can see, everything works perfectly. This arm isn't perfect. Yeah, as I said before, it only works in camera and it can't be turned on and off on the fly. But here it is. So yeah, guys, thanks for watching.